What's up guys, Ethan here from the Happy Bill Project. Quick reminder, if you wanna support this channel, all you need to do is hit the subscribe button up there or down there. Also, don't forget to like and share useful videos with your friends. Any questions, comments, or wanna say hello, drop us a note in the comment section. Thanks for your support, guys. It's gonna make perfect sense in how it's gonna play out. Um, and these are ones that attach really well together. So you might think right now you're going, this is different. This isn't what we would do. We're going sprawling. Trust me when I tell you it'll, it'll attach later. What's going to happen a lot of times, you're going to come in here and you're going to keep trying to sprawl. And their hooks are so deep under you that you can't kick that leg out. Right? And you're going, man, like he's on a really great hook in here. And you're going, and he's not letting this leg kick out. And you're sitting here like this. And you're going, man, I can't really sprawl that leg out. Or you might feel a little bit of a fear of like, man, he's really trying to elevate me. He's trying to come underneath me. He's trying to pick me up. There's a great weight of uh, disadvantage, not in my favor. So I'm like sitting super low, trying not to get sucked up into that. Because a guy, hypothetically, if you're 150 pounds and the guy's 230, he might get you up in the air. And that's the last thing I really wanted to do at this point is get up in the air. And now he's teeter-tottering me all over the place, right? So I'm aggressively, regardless, I was pushing into these ribs and I'm holding this. So I leave this pocket. But he's a smart guy. He's not going to let me smash him. If he was that strong, he wouldn't let me smash them anyway. So the first thing I do is I make a wedge on one side. There is this V pocket right now, okay? So everybody can see this. Everybody, there's a V pocket right here, okay? So as I come up, I lift my leg to insert it and drop it inside. Now I'm sitting with my shin on his calf, okay? This will play later into the sprawl pass. When you're here at this point, you're like this. And now this is gonna play out two different ways. One where I get my knee in the middle and then I try to step over or I just take dominant position in the middle and start knee cutting. Those are, I'm just telling you a story and how this could play out. But at this point, when we land this position on here, this is how we made this first wedge. And you'll see this a lot like this. You're like up in the air, hold my other butter. And you're like this above him. And he was, you left his pocket. And now I push this guy down and I drop him. And now I'm like this. And now I'm coming forward. The one I want to play, that one was the half, right? But I don't want to play that one right now. I want to play this one where we're going like this. We're just getting into the habit of picking my knee line over his calf. And now I'm just, I'm doing the same flare and I'm spinning off this kneecap. So all I'm doing is this. As I land here, we're not over in the fight. We're like this right now. So my first reaction is the same reaction. I don't go forward. I don't go left. I don't go right. I look to pin the bottom leg and transfer my knees. It's the same scroll pass from the position. Same exact thing. Okay, so you can play it from either way. You will if you do it from here and he's trying to pick you up and you're pushing and now I'm like this dropping. I won't have the chance or I could. I'm not gonna say you don't, depending on where this position is. Obviously I have a half guard set that I could run up on, but I'm gonna say no. At this point, I'm just gonna drop my knee. I'm gonna flare this guy. I'm gonna go two behind one and I'm gonna come to the same position over this step up. The same exact spot. So you're gonna get into comps that you're gonna be heavy on your, he's gonna be heavy on the hooks. And you're like, I'm not releasing these hooks on a sprawl. There's no way. And now I'm I don't feel comfortable leaving that pocket and I don't feel like coming up. So now I'm going vertical and I'm pushing you away, but I'm getting my first wedge in here. So this is how it'll play out. Guy's super tight on the hooks and you're playing it. And now I just got it inside. Okay, I pressed on it. I had a frame on the inside cap, right? And now as I land the same pivot, I'm here pivoting going two behind one, I make sure I get my two behind one, I don't advance. Because if I do, and keep this tight, there's a reason I'm gonna say this, is that he's gonna have two recoveries right now. One is he's looking for this kneecap to touch my hip bone right here. Because if he can slide this in, he'll slide it in and he'll press away and then take out the bottom one, right? So pay attention to it. Because if you feel it touching there, you have to make sure you block it and start aggressively coming this way. Because I'm sitting so low in the pocket, it's not realistic for him to curl over. You will have the exceptions. Eddie coming when I used to roll with him live, man, that guy could take that thing and turn it over and scrape the back of his head and you go, man, the foot's back in front of me, man. Crazy. And it's true, Eddie's flexibility on that, on that rotation of the legs was imp so impressive. Um, and that's why nobody passed his guard. 
right? So same position, right? We're getting on the inside frame, getting our kneecap through, dropping it, spinning, two behind one, step over, run the line. Let's go, let's do it. Over here, and then think that you're gonna go like this and then put this thing in the middle. You're making this barrier here. So if you attach them all together, let's say, let's play this story on how, because you have to understand how the person reacts and how you need to react. So you're like this, right? I'm telling you to make this form touch this inside cap. Because what happens, let's say I go like this and I'm pressing to push this thing down, right? What's his reaction? To pick it up and push it back in. So I curl over the top and I slam it and that's, that's that smash pass. But now, why is your hand here? Because now you don't have a smash pass. So you're ready to set up well for his reaction. I'm not trying to force what I want to do. I'm, re, I'm, I'm just doing, and then you're reacting, and I react off of you. And that's a beautiful player. That's a player that you just go, you go, wow, what a game. Like, but if you're here and going like that, then you had no smash over here, okay? Secondly, if I'm telling you to ride the, I just want to release these hooks. I want to turn an angle. Right, so I see some people going like this. I didn't turn any angle, I'm still straight on him. And now what's he gonna do? You're like this, right? And I'll tell you what he's gonna do. He's gonna latch on a scorpion, and you're gonna go like this, you know, latch on a scorpion below. And now you're like this because your leg was sitting straight, and now you're stuck here and going, and the two of you are sitting here for five minutes, and he's trying to reverse you and get underneath you. Because you didn't turn the angle in the beginning. You left the shin straight line down the center. It's not what I'm doing. I'm like this, and as I land, this leg goes, because no matter what, even if I landed in the center, I still want to be here because I don't want to sit the shin down the center line, and I'm getting scorpion, and now I got to, I got to bail on that thing because he's going to, the whole equation, I told you he was bigger than you. Forget about that. You're going to feel like your knee's going to pop. Professor Gino, you guys see him a little bit as an older man now, but at one time, man, he popped multiple knees, and his scorpion was this thing to go to. And, uh, and he got Lucas, his own claim to fame, he got Lucas Lepre over at seven minutes and was up two nothing at the pans. So there was a time that you, you know, Gino lifted weights and was beefy and all these things, like, he's a different player. But if your line is sitting here, you never change the angle and you're not like this. I'm telling you to go like this and regardless is like, this pitch would have been this way anyway. This pitch would have been this way anyway because what did I tell you earlier? He was trying to touch my hip. So I would have wanted to be this way anyway to spin it back the other way and facing that angle to come this way. So you got to understand how, why I'm asking you to do certain things. I, I see these modifications of people just going like, like, I mean, that, you're never going to do that. If you want to go vertical or you want to stay low, this is how this is set. I'm going in here. I'm riding these things tight, right? I'm not playing this game like, okay, so I'm just going to go like this. Like, I, no. No, and then this thing was so tight on you, what's gonna release it? My kneecap over and my body weight. So as I drop it, it's coming down and releasing. He's not gonna tell, you're not gonna tell me that he's gonna hold me up with a calf muscle and I'm dropping this at an angle. I'm gonna release that foot, right? But now what I'd love to do is if you do it right, then we hit the sprawl, right? Um, I'm not warmed up. Can I have you, Polly? Can you go to sprawl with that, with that cut? So this is what I'd love for you to do is you're like this and you're getting inside and now he's going to hit the sport right from there. Man, that thing is so hard to follow because you think you're getting cut down the center and now he explodes it out. Man, he makes a living at that pad and, and he's in the early stages of learning it. Um, so you, that's what I'd love to take it to. So if we could partner again, remember about the angle shifts. This isn't me going head to head. And now I, I hate when larger players have this like thing where they go, ah, I do it. I know, but you, dude, man, go up against high level guys. They're going to crush you. They're going to crush you. You're going to, because you don't, you're the top of the food chain in the room and you can out muscle guys or recover people, recover through muscle and strength and power your way to these recoveries. Man, you come on fun, come on Friday night, put you with Hiron. Come on, put you with Enzo like and, and Ethan and man, they're gonna cut you apart like nothing. You're gonna be recovering nonstop. So back again. 
So the first one, the, sec the one we just did without the sprawl. So you're dropping, right? The moment it drops, yeah, and you're going right on that pivot to make the two behind one. But don't leave that knee line in the center going long like that. Okay, because he's going to latch it up, and now he's going to be pinning that calf, and now you're going to have issues again. So but I'd like to be able to do this two more one where I'm the f first round of one, is to do this in the three cycles left for round two, and then hit the sprawl off of the one he just did on the last two rounds. Okay, guys, let's partner up. Let's do it. Let's how it starts. You're like this. And now your hands are somewhere here or here. I, don't, I have no idea. I know that I'm not going to get sucked up. No matter what, if he starts pulling on my hands, I'm backing out. There's no reason for me to touch this. I haven't beat these shins yet. So I'm like this, and I'm gonna say two different things, right? One, I'm gonna ask you to pivot one way. One, I'm gonna ask you to sprawl it the other way. So you're like this in this engagement. The moment we're in this engagement, I'm gonna drop and touch this on a wide wedge, just like this, and just pin it, and I'm gonna flare one way, okay? And I'm gonna drive this angle through, okay? But on the second one, so you're looking like this. You're fig he's trying to figure out what you're going to touch because you can play this multiple ways. I don't have to come up like this, but on this one, when you come up, I'm going to ask you to kick this guy out and hit the sprawl on this side. But on this guy, you're going the other way. So he can't figure out if you're going framing with sprawling. He can't figure out if you're dropping center line. He can't figure out if I'm pinning and flaring. So if you get good at the combos, now you can see where they go because I'm just figuring out, I'm reading your hands. I'm not just going into this engagement like this. Come up for a second. This is how it plays out most of the time. Are you crazy? This guy would have thrown you all over the place. He would have clamped me. He would have gone deep half guard. He would have elevated me. Shouldn't have been there from the beginning. I should have been looking like this. Yes, sir. Now I got that pin right there on that leg. So I should be going this way. I should be hitting this and turning it, and now I'm holding this leg. He's potentially coming this way, and I'm going back this way. That's how it should be when you start, right? That's realistic. But going like this, like this is over for you already. This is over for you. You just gave him too much an advantage. So I'm asking you to pivot. You can play it like this. You lay down. So your partner could just stay here. Just like that, and you're learning how to go. You're imagining him up, and we just clap hands. And I went, I touched. I went, why wedge that pin? I flared. So now I just drive it through. Most of the time, they'll react, and they'll come in here with this kneecap, and I come back. No big deal. But if I don't, if I can't, and he gives me base, okay. So I can't drive it through, but I'm doing the same, same position. That's the same spot. That's the same spot. So if he gives me these bases, then he's giving me support on the upper body to change my kneecap lines, right? So same position. So on one side, we're just pinning and flaring, right? And then the bottom player should give you a, a pin because if he doesn't, just so that we're on the same page on this. If I'm like this and I flare and he doesn't support me, then it's not realistic because I'm just gonna fall right through and just follow this into a side control pin. But we're gonna say he's gonna support me. Because he just got beat on this flare, and now he's going like this, trying to, yeah. And now if he didn't do anything, if he shows me the outside, I could step over, come back a second. That's how he just was right now. Okay, so he supported me. Now I'm up again this way. Same position I was doing before. On that side, I'm going to ask you to sprawl. So, Eighth, can you go over sprawling with him? So the same position. So look how you had your shin. He's doing the same cut, the same knee drop. Yes, sir. But he's going to a sprawl on it. So he's right there, stay right. Yes. Okay, so he can't figure out because the moment you start dropping in the center, he's going to have a hyper focus to protect the center line because he knows if that knee drops, he can't allow the kneecap to get before the knees and the groin area. So he's going to fight for that center line pocket because he feels you, but now you tricked him. So he's coming here and now you're hitting it. Do it again. So I hope this makes sense and how it plays out because it's incredibly important. If you know the playbook and how to play it, it becomes, it's beautiful to watch on my part. When I see it done, like Danny does it, a lot of guys in the room, when, when, it, when you guys do it right, man, it's so much fun to watch. So you're like this, right? And you did the one before, and now you're coming up to get a center drop because his hooks are so tight. But as you're dropping, he's, yes. And he thinks you're coming down the center. Now you just hit that thing up there. So the first one, Bottom player doesn't have to do one, he only got to do one thing. All he's got to do is when you do the flare with the pin on the ankle. So he's got to, yes, all he's got to do is you're driving, he's got to just support you. 
So if he gives you support, that allows you to flip your knee lines. Drop your, no, uh, drop your knee lines to a shelf, right? So you just went like the, yeah, okay, back again. <laughs> yeah, flare it, perfect. He supported you so you could flip your knee lines, yes, right? Because that's how you can support. If he doesn't give you support, as you're pushing through, you're just gonna fall into a side control position. Okay, guys, let's partner up and do it. We have about seven minutes, guys.